Hello and welcome back. Before I go on with my series of making things trash to treasure, um, I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things I have and some of the things I plan on doing them with them. I think the next video will be doing kitchen items, which I know everybody's doing, but I'm going to try my hardest to come up with some different stuff or at least different ways to do things. So today what I wanted to do was I wanted to go through some of my stuff that I have and just show you and the possibilities that there are for this kind of stuff. So let's get started. First of all, and I'm not even going to do this one because I think there are so many, so many videos out there of people doing this. And that is taking beads and making little bottles, like perfume bottles or whatever. This is just a little square one I did. And for the top of that one, I used a very small old post earring. And it has a little uh, iridescent bead in the top of it. I don't think you can see that, but it's there. I did the same thing for the top of this one. It also has a little iridescent bead in the top of it, or iridescent um, earring post, I'm sorry. This one I just did a glass bead, I did a um, bead cap on the bottom and a little pearl bead on top, which I thought worked out really cute. Same thing here, but I love the shape of this, this uh, drop shape bead, so I did the same there. I believe that one just has a little amber colored seed bead on top. Same thing. Okay, and then moving on to other things you can use for bottles. Um, I have a friend who uses the Rustasis eye drops, and this was not my idea. I saw it on Queen City Minis. Uh, but you can make little bottles out of those, and I think this one turned out really cute. It's The only label I had was for a solid dressing, so that's what I did. And for the top of this bottle, I used a brad back from the days when I was doing, um, I was doing junk journals and stuff. So that's just a little brad glued into the top of the Rostasis bottle. So yeah, really cute. This is another one I haven't done anything with yet, but I cut it down shorter to make a shorter bottle. And then I'll just be probably filling the end of it, or just, you know, putting some hot glue down here on the bottoms to make sure I have a a nice and even base because they're hollow. I took paint and I just went up inside of it to make it look like there was some solid dressing in there. Okay, another idea while I'm here, or while it's right here in front of me, is these are little glass beads. Now, there's different shapes of little glass beads, very small ones, flowers, hearts, you name it. This just happened to be a little oval and I painted in pink and I thought, how much does that look like a tiny bar of soap? And if you had the flowers or the hearts or whatever shape you can find that's, you know, more of like a little flat bead, how cute for decorator soaps. That would work really well. Okay, let's move on. Um, I'm going to really quick grab my miter shears if I can get over there. I'm still cleaning. Still trying to figure out what to do with stuff. But I want to show you a trick with miter shears, and I'm assuming you could do this with like a razor saw or something like that. But you need to be very, very, very careful. So, I'm going into my thing here where I have a bunch of beads and stuff. Um, I just need to find the right size. There we go. And I'm going to show you that if you take the bead, and you put it so that the hole, oops, that didn't work. <laughs> if you put it so that the hole is lined up with your miter shears, you see the hole's right there. Um, if you put it in here, and I caution again, be very careful when you're doing this. You can split your bead right in half. So you go, you got two halves of a bead, so if you don't want to work with the whole bead, there you go, you got halves. Split really easy. These are some beads I ordered off Amazon. Um, yeah, so onward, I think we'll go through my wood box 
first because I don't have a lot of stuff in here that I have my beads of course and then these I don't believe are wood I think they're more of a cardboard but um, I didn't know else to put them what these are is these are the old liners that went inside the milk the old when we had glass milk bottles and then there was a foil or something over the top usually with the dairy's name and that on it um, I found a whole bag of these at Savers but they're perfect circles they're a good size and can be used for well anything you need a circle for um, matchsticks I save matchsticks uh, they're just very very handy for a lot of different things they're square they're easy to cut yeah so I use matchsticks um, I have this bag I'm not sure why I saved this bag this is also back when I was doing junk journals and stuff like that. Um, I have this. This was a bird cage. I don't remember if I bought it or someone gifted it to me. But what I thought I might do with this is I thought I might cut out these spokes in the middle. Saving them, of course, because they're a good, they're very small, good size to use. And I thought that, you know, in a future project, this might make a nice decorative window if you get rid of the little, you know, hanger on the top and stuff. So that's a thought. Um... I probably should have thrown away a lot of this stuff, but that was my thought on that. Um, let's see. I think that's probably about it for what I have in here. Mostly it's just all wooden beads. Oh yeah, and some cute little doggies I had. <laughs> they may or may not find their way into a project at some point. I'm going to go over my plastic box because we all end up with a lot of plastic. Some of these are so big, I don't know why I kept them. Uh, of course, I have acetate sheets so that I can use those for window glass or whatever. I have, let's see, I'll take these out because I've got a lot of just pieces of acetate that I'm going to be using for windows and stuff like that if I need them. Um, I have these, I'm not sure exactly what they were used for, but they're little white discs with little holes in the middle. I think there's some sort of plastic washer probably. So those I'm going to see what I can do with. I save small bottles like this. I've seen people make really cute wood stoves with those. Um, I have, well obviously I've got all kinds of caps off stuff. This is off a uh, glue stick. This was off a uh, I think it covered the battery posts when I put a new battery in my car. Both of those would make great flower pots. These are bigger. I think I even have some a little bigger than this and they would make cool laundry hampers if you, you know, made them look like baskets or you could put fabric on the outside of them. It could be a good size waste basket for a room. There's so many uses for just plain bottle caps. Could even be a big lampshade if you turned it upside down and painted it. Um, I have an old leftover, this was from an old light, the dollhouse light, and the light was no good, it was so old, so I saved the shade. Not sure exactly what I'm going to use it for, but I really like it. Um, ping pong ball. I'm hoping in an upcoming tutorial that I will be able to remember, I had a book, and the book showed how to turn a regular ping pong ball into a Tiffany style lamp. So hopefully I can remember how that goes and we'll do a tutorial on that. Um, I have this. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but it kind of looks kind of mid-century and I eventually want to get around to something mid-century. It's my favorite era, the 50s, 60s, 70s. So yeah, I have that. And I think this was a decoration. Of, I don't even know. It's plastic, but yeah, I have that. So, <laughs> I think it'd make a really cool wall plaque. Um, I have, of course, saved all of these little, you know, packaging like this because they make wonderful sinks. Um, you could probably also take them and cut the edges off, make a little dish pan. But I think that's that's, that's going to be part of my kitchen series, which I'm doing next. Uh, speaking of mid-century, this is another one of those little dividers that came in a pizza we, we had ordered one time. 
and this is triangular so it's probably going to be end up being a triangular side table and I've saved these that have come off stuff I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with them yet because they are rather big but I'm sure there's a use um, these off the water bottles make neat little dishes you can make a little pan if you put a handle like I said there, there's so much um, I even have a cracked wiffle ball that my cat's finally destroyed. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, but I'm sure there's something. Um, of course, these shallow pans, you know, the little shallow ones. We'll be using those. I've saved, I even saved this thing. I think it came in a bag with some other stuff. And... I think it's supposed to be one of those things that goes on the back of your phone, but it's so crappy that, yeah, it would never work on your phone. This used to be sticky. So I was like, oh, what can I do with that? And I was going to throw it away, and I thought, well, you know, it's got kind of a big base, but you can make a little stool out of it if you patted the top. That would work. Um, I just have so many different things that I have saved. I've got a bunch of these rings in all different sizes. I saved the ends off the thermometers. Grandma's living room wastebasket is one of these. Painted and then wrapped with uh, just regular twine. Turned out really cute. Yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm to the point now where I hate to throw anything out. And I should because I have way too much stuff. Okay, let's move on to some of these boxes I have here. Um... That's when I just have a lot of beads and odds and ends in. And of course there's bead caps. And then like I said, there's all the different shaped beads. Um, I've got these that I think are kind of cute. They're buttons. But you could, you know, take like, cut the shank off. They're just, they're just a plastic. They're really easy to cut the shanks off of. And you could hang them in your kitchen for little, you know, just decorations. Uh, also... When I did the witch's house, or started the witch's room box book thing, I also have the little buttons that I used on some of that, the little Halloween ones. And again, I just, you know, cut the shanks off and did it that way. That worked really well. Um, here I have some different sorts of buttons, but those also I'm sure you could do something with to make, you know, a little, like... Oh, you know, like wall hanging or something like that. Okay, I have a bunch of these because you had to buy a bunch of them. They came in a big package. There's all different shapes and sizes. And what these are, are the, they were the Tim Holtz. And I used them on journals. I used them for charms on journals. And I would just back them with, like, you know, some, some, decor some piece of paper that had a real, something on it that, yeah, whatever. And anyway, though, these remind me a lot of the glass cutting boards you can get nowadays. And so I I think that would be a good use for those. Maybe there's other ones. I'm not sure. But that's what came to mind when I first saw those. I My brother gifts me all kinds of things. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. But this is a spool out of an old camera film that you used to get. Got that. I've got Lots of buttons. I've got beads. I've got these tiny, tiny pom-poms. I think they're so cute. I've never used them. I'm sure there will be a project for those. This is my metal. Most of my metal is in here. And if you wanted a great big wall hanging, here's a nice metal leaf you can put up on the wall. Um, yeah, I... This one I have, it's full of charms of all different sorts. This was off of Brad, or this was a charm and it just had kind of a plastic bubble with a really weird little design in it. But I thought if I cut this top part off, I would have a tiny tray, a picture frame, part of a mirror, a base for something, all kinds of uses for something like that. Um, and there's just some other little charms I bought. If you were doing a little sea theme, I've got a turtle, I've got a star, I've got all kinds of stuff there. 
And I mean, I've got all shapes. I've got keys. I've got, you name it, I've got it, I think. So yeah, a lot of use for those. They could be repainted or put it with something else to make them into things you could use for your house, little knickknacks, wall decoration, that kind of stuff. Uh, these are a really awful looking pair of earrings and I have removed the, uh, they had little loops on top to attach them so they dangle. But in a mid-century house, how cool would those be for wall art? And then you could just, you know, either decoupage something on or just glue something onto them. I think they'd be really cute little wall plaques. So keep, please keep in mind any old jewelry, old earrings, because they really are useful. Just let your imagination run wild, because that's how we came up with all this cool stuff. Um, I had this spoon. I think it came in a pack with some charms or something. And it's a big metal spoon. And it's like, I had no idea what I was ever going to do with this. But now, thinking back, in the 60s, I know for sure everybody had these huge spoons and huge forks hanging on their walls. I mean, these things were big. I'm assuming they were almost two and a half, two feet long. Probably about two feet long. So I thought, well, you know what, maybe I can make one of those if I ever do my 50s, 60s house. So I'm saving that now. I was going to get rid of it. I have got old watch parts that are very tiny, which are really good to use for things. I got into steampunk. I mean, I still love steampunk. I do. Um, I took apart some old watches that didn't work anymore. And so, like, here's a little clock face you could use. All you'd have to do is mount it on something and you know, make whatever you want to go around it, or just leave it the way it is. Another good idea, um, also, when I was doing the junk journals and stuff, I would bought a bunch of these little clock faces. So that's another idea. Just have to put some hands on and mount it on something. Um, as I said, bead caps, spacer beads, all that kind of stuff are wonderful. Um, with the little watches, of course, I had the little crystals out of them, so then I had little pieces of glass I could use. Not sure what I'm going to do with all these earring things, but I'm probably going to be hunting YouTube looking for something I can do with those because I have a lot of them. I've got gigantic snaps, which could be used as a base for something, or I'm sure there are other uses for them too. I've got all kinds of those. I've got grommets, eyelets, whatever you want to call them. Very useful for things. Lamp bases, you know, just anything like that. Uh, brads are brads are a good thing to use, and I don't, this doesn't have my brads in it, but as I showed you, they make really cool little tops for bottles, and if you had bigger ones, you could also make like small jars and then just nip off the little the little metal pieces that you spread out when you attach the brad, you could nip those off and then use that for your jar tops or bigger bottles, wide mouth bottles. That would work really well. Um, even just little charms, you know. The little charms could just be little wall hangings if you cut the little loop off the top. So yeah, that's just a few ideas. I think the next video we will be doing making some kitchen items because I will be needing those for the farmhouse. And I'm sure there's a few more things we could stick in Grandma's kitchen also. So that's kind of going to be the video today. Just some ideas of things that, you know, you may not have thought of and, and that kind of stuff. I've gotten into paper quilling because I watch Laura on Tiny View, who's amazing. And so I started just doing some quilling just for the fun of it, practicing to see what I could come up with. And I did come up with kind of a little bottle shape. So I think I'm going to, a uh, tip I got from Angiog was I was, is that when she did paper quilling like this, uh, she coated hers in like spackle so that she could, you know, have a smooth surface and not have the ridges. And so she, so yeah, she did that and then sanded it off. So I'm thinking this would be kind of cute for a little stoneware bottle or something. And someday I'll get the hang of this cooling. It's, 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 you know, I mean, it's just wrapping paper, but you've got to make sure you got the right tightness so that it works right. So I'm practicing on that. Um, 
Yeah, but just really look at something before you throw it out because there are so many ideas, you know, out there and use your imagination and create something spectacular from nothing. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this here and I hope that you all have a great day, a great week. Thank you for joining me. We'll be back next week and I will be doing some things for the kitchen. Bye-bye.